So in my 30s, I hung up my skates for the first time and I kind of semi-retired because after every skate, couldn't get out of bed. It was really hard to walk. I just had so much pain in my hips and my knees. So in this video, I want to share with you what I'm doing currently with my physiotherapist to ensure that I can keep playing goalie on a consistent basis. So when I was 30, I was introduced to a physiotherapist who showed me something called IMS, which is short for intramuscular stimulation. This is a technique where you use acupuncture type needles and kind of stimulate the tight muscles in your body. So after months of doing this type of treatment, I was finally able to put the skates back on and finally get back to playing goalie regularly without waking up with a ton of pain in my legs. So that was over a decade-ish ago. So when I started this channel out, I started playing a lot more scrimmages and games. So I decided to restart this type of treatment. But on top of this IMS treatment, I also have a very strict stretching and strength program that was provided to me from my physio. And what I wanna to do today is I'm gonna show you one of the lower hanging fruit stretches. It's a very, very common stretch that all of you have probably done, but I was actually doing it incorrectly for the last few years. So we're gonna go over that today. And I hope it helps you goalies out there who might have the same problems that I did. So if you've been following this channel, one of the things that we really talk about a lot is something I like to call the saggy butt syndrome. So when you go into your butterfly and you kind of sag your butt backwards, it doesn't really give you a lot of mobility to move laterally while you're on the ice. So I was having a lot of problems doing this. And one of the main things that I wanted to focus on when working with my therapist was to figure out why I was doing this and also come up with a plan to allow me to sit more upright in my butterfly. And what we came up with was the lowest hanging fruit and that was attacking the quads. So your quads are probably super duper tight if you've been working at a desk job for the last 20 years like I have. So they definitely need a lot of attention to get loosened up. And the stretch that we're gonna be looking at is the almighty kneeling quad stretch. All right, so the kneeling quad stretch is super common type of stretch. All you need is a piece of foam or a cushion to protect your knee. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using a bench or a couch if you have one. Put the pillow or a soft thing on the bottom, put your knee down, put your ankle on top of the bench, and we're gonna go into a kneeling position like this. If this is too intense for you, you can always not use the bench and just kind of go flat down and do the same exercise like this. So now that I have my ankle on the bench, the first cue that we need to do is we need to embrace our core, so tighten that up, and then push our pelvis forward compared to if I'm just relaxed, like I'm like sticking my butt out, I have a really large arch in my back. So I don't want to do that. When I do it like this, I actually don't feel much of a stretch down here in the front. But when I embrace my core and then I push my pelvis forward, get a really, really nice intense stretch along here. And you want to just, if you have your foot up elevated like I do, you can just sit up straight and kind of just rock into a position where you feel this really, really intense type of stretch. When I first started doing this, I think the furthest I could get was like around here maybe, and this was just too intense for me. But now I'm able to kind of push back like this. So once I'm in this position, I'm gonna hold this. And what you're gonna see a lot of things online is, hey, just hold this for 30 seconds aside, and you're good to go for the day. If you think about it, how long do we sit? Probably eight hours a day if you're working a day job and you're traveling and such. Eight hours a day versus 30 seconds of trying to lengthen this, it's probably not gonna do anything to your body, right? So we're gonna hold this, and we're not gonna do 30 seconds, we're gonna hold it for a minute, okay? And we're gonna do a minute per side, and overall we're actually gonna be doing 10 minutes per side. So what I'll usually do is I'll do two minute holds per side for five reps for each side. And we're holding it that long because like, if you have really tight quads like I do, your body is not used to being in this lengthened position. And when you're holding it for this long, your body needs time to understand that it's okay to be in this position. And it starts to kind of just relax and then adapt a new range for your quad muscle. And when we're actually playing in the butterfly position, we want to be in this kind of like tall hip forward position, kind of over the puck, as opposed to kind of like the, the saggy butt thing we always talk about is like this, when your quads are really tight, it's kind of it kind of just pulls you back into this type of position. You want to just kind of lengthen like that. So this is why we're doing this quad stretch to allow us to open up and get over the puck 
as we're in our butterfly. So when I used to do this stretch, I used to just do what was comfortable about 30 seconds aside, and then that was it. I think it, I mean, I think it sort of helped a little bit. Now that I've actually seen a physical therapist in person, doing these long 10 minute per side holds and using a bench to elevate my leg and really just understanding like how intense it has to be for your body to actually physically change and to adapt to that new spot. That's how you're actually going to get some change over time doing these particular stretches. If you're already doing this type of stretch and you're not really seeing much benefit from it, try doing some of these things like holding a bit longer, pushing your pelvis forward and holding that, holding that core real tight, but also give it some time. So you really need to do this consistently night in and night out. This is one of my like non-negotiable stretches that I do every single night. And I've noticed a huge difference in just my hip mobility, the pain in my back, my ability to recover each night, and even being able to just play a lot lower in my stance on the ice and just moving a lot smoother as well too. So attacking the quads was one of the first steps into gaining more mobility to help me on the ice and also recovery. And that kneeling quad stretch that I just showed you, that was like the first thing that I had to do for at least a week before we moved on to working on strengthening and other stretches like internal rotations and such. So I kind of wanted to give you a glimpse of some type of physio work that I'm doing to keep my body going, allow me to play a bunch of games and still be able to feel okay the next day. This is just a small part of about an hour long nightly routine that I have to do. So if you want to hear more about that routine, I'm more than happy to share it with you. Just let me know in the comments below. We can do a couple more videos about that if that's something you guys like to see. I hope this helps you guys out. Fix those tight quads. Once you get those all loosened up, you're going to feel way better on the ice and your everyday life, which is also important. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.